वेलकम स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू ए केमिस्ट्री क्लास अल्कोहल फिनॉल एंड ईथर चैप्टर सो इन लास्ट क्लास वी लर्न ए केमिकल रिएक्शन हाउ वे फिनॉल्स अंडर गोस ए इलेक्ट्रोफिलिक सब्सटूशन रिएक्शन सच एज सल्फोनेशन नाइट्रेशन हेलोजिनेशन राइट सो डिफरेंट रिएक्शन वी सो सो टूडे लेटेस्ट गो विथ ए few other reactions how we phenol reacts with a uh, giving a new products so in this today class we will see the one of the very important reaction is a cobbs reaction so cobbs reaction is a one of the naming reaction where we can prepare phenol to as a salicylic acid very important reaction so here phenol reacts with a carbon dioxide in the presence of the alkali such as sodium hydroxide by using a suitable condition such as the temperature and pressure so the temperature almost we are using a 400 kelvin and atmosphere pressure 4 to 7 atmosphere pressure we are maintaining to give a phenol into as a salicylic acid so students let us see how this reactions will take place i mean the mechanism so initially we know phenol is less reactive towards a electrophilic substitution reaction so that's why we are making a phenol into as a phenoxide ion because phenoxide ion is a strong or more reactive than phenol towards a electrophilic substitution reaction usually phenoxide reacts with a carbon dioxide the process is called as a nucleophilic substitution reaction so here the carbon dioxide is a very weak electrophile am i right it is a very weak electrophile so this weak electrophile reacts with a phenoxide and it undergoes a resonance where it gives a carboxylic acid at a ortho position so this is what the orally i explained about the cobbs reaction now let me see here how this reaction really how it works so the first one is as i said the sodium phenoxide when it is heated with the carbon dioxide in the presence of the 400 kelvin or 125 degree celsius in the presence of 4 to 5 atmospheric pressure it uh, further means when we add a few drops of acid where it gives a salicylic acid as a main product so phenoxide ion is more reactive towards the electrophilic substitution reaction hence it undergoes esr electrophilic substitution reaction with a weak electrophile as a carbon dioxide so now let us see how this mechanism works when a phenol reacts with a base sodium hydroxide so the phenol we are making as a phenoxide ion by reacting with a sodium hydroxide when it reacts with a sodium hydroxide one of the hydrogen from the phenol reacts with a oh to form as a water so minus water so here water has removed when a sodium hydroxide reacted with a phenol so we got as a sodium phenoxide or simply we call as a phenoxide ion where phenoxide ion it undergoes a resonance means it stabilizes it undergoes a delocalized within a benzene structure from the oxygen where it undergoes a resonance it forms a negative charge at a ortho positions so carbon dioxide as already i mentioned it's a very weak electrophile when we write a structure of the carbon dioxide c double bond o double bond o so we have a positive charge the partial positive charge we have a partial negative charge here also we have a partial negative charge so now when this carbonyl the carbon dioxide carbon reacts at ortho position because the carbon dioxide is a weak electrophile it reacts with a rich in electrons right it reacts with a very rich in electron at ortho position to give the intermediate called as a sodium salicylate so this this now what we got as a one of the intermediate the sodium salicylate further when you add a few drops of an acid means when it is acidified the sodium salicylate will give as a salicylic acid is also called as ortho hydroxy benzoic acid 
so you can observe the number the naming the numbering we are giving from the carboxylic acid one and two so the iupac name is the two hydroxy benzoic acid the carboxylic acid group is introduced at a ortho portion because the ortho portion we can see there is a more electron density and b carbon dioxide is being electrophile it reacts with a ortho portion to give as a salicylic acid Students, just to recall in the last session we learned how to prepare a aspirin so aspirin is a one of the important product where we use for to uh, relieve from the painkiller so it acts as a painkiller actually aspirin how that aspirin is prepared yes when a salicylic acid is reacted with the acetic anhydride in the presence of the pyridine where it gives as a aspirin to acetoxy benzoic acid am i right aspirin is also called as the two acetoxy benzoic acid so this is one of the very important reaction here you should note that usually this reaction that phenoxidium this phenoxidium reacts with a carbon dioxide as a nucleophilic substitution reaction because the carbon dioxide is a weak electrophile right so then easily that uh, electron density is more at ortho portion then it undergoes a electrophilic substitution reaction of carbon dioxide with a phenoxide so i hope you understood how a phenol gives as a salicylic acid now let us go to the next reaction yes the next one is also one of the naming reaction rimer timan reaction so the rimer timan reaction is a reaction where we used to prepare a salicyl aldehyde so the aldehyde group we have introduced at a ortho position so it is a substitution reaction basically it is a substitution reaction so let us see how the reactions will take place so after studying the reaction we will go with a mechanism so initially we have taken a phenol when a phenol reacts with a chloroform with the, in the presence of the aqueous sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide when a phenol reacts with a chloroform in the presence of aqueous sodium hydroxide a intermediate is obtained again when it is acidified we get a salicyl aldehyde so now we should know which is the main reactive species in this rimer timan reaction that is a one question and what the intermediate is obtained so that intermediate immediately we are adding a acid to give a salicylic acid so here the treatment of the phenol with a chloroform in the presence of the sodium hydroxide followed by hydrolysis gives a two hydroxy benzaldehyde is also called as a salicyl aldehyde this reaction is called as rimer timan reaction now chloroform we have a chloroform right so chcl3 this chloroform is deprotonated by aqueous sodium hydroxide so you can observe here we have a chcl3 chcl3 we have so okay i'm writing here in a very simplest way chcl3 so this is cl this is cl this is one cl and this is one h this is what the chloroform in this chloroform the as already i said when you take the aqueous sodium hydroxide this aqueous sodium hydroxide makes a deprotonated of the chloroform to give as a trichlorocarbene what is the formula of the trichlorocarbene c cl cl there are three cl hence it is said to be as a trichlorocarbene because you have a we have a negative charge then this trichlorocarbene immediately it in the, it undergoes a alpha elimination of the chlorine to form as a a dichlorocarbene a dichlorocarbene so this is one cl so we have a cl carbon here so here we have a cl we have a cl here we have a lone pair of electrons so hence it is said to be as a carbene carbene is very uh, what we call as reactive series in this in this reaction the carbene the dichlorocarbene is the one which is very reactive species where it carries a reaction to give a salicyl aldehyde here also i showed that chloroform reacts with a base to give as a a di 
trichlorocarbene. So for immediately it undergoes the alpha elimination to form as a dichlorocarbene and water. So now this dichlorocarbene reacts where there is a rich the dichlorocarbene is a uh, we having it is having the lone pair of electrons so then it should react with a where there is a lesser number of electrons so of course here the phenol we initially it forms as a phenoxide ion yes we know phenoxide and even the phenoxide ion how a phenol is converted into, into it as a phenoxide ion so even the sodium hydroxide makes phenol has a phenoxide ion so not only that chloroform react with a sodium hydroxide to give as a reactive species as a dichlorocarbene, even that sodium hydroxide reacts with a phenol to form as a phenoxide ion, which is more reactive towards a electrophilic substitution reaction. So here we have a lone pair of electrons, means it reacts where there is a maximum number of electrons. So the maximum number of electrons means the phenol Phenoxide undergoes a resonance to form as electron density which is more at the ortho position. So there the electron density is more hence that dichlorocarbon reacts at the ortho position to give as an intermediate. What is the intermediate here? Dichloromethyl substitute group of the phenoxide ion. This is a dichloram, right? This is a dichloromethyl group that is a substitute over the phenoxide ion. You can write as O minus even you can write as a sodium phenoxide because the sodium hydroxide makes phenol as a phenoxide ion which is which makes uh, more reactive towards the ESR electrophilic substitution reaction. Now in this so this intermediate is form again this intermediate when it reacts with the sodium hydroxide just you try to understand that sodium and chlorine combines to form as a minus NaCl. So the sodium chloride. So the sodium chloride when it removes so the remaining part will be attached at the ortho portion to form the CHO group is attached at the ortho portion. In, when you acidify it with acid you will get as a salicylate aldehyde as a major product. So very important the rimer timer reaction. You may ask sir here we have the uh, dichloro uh, methyl group we have here we have and sodium here we have right. So it undergoes just it is a LA, uh, hydrogen shift it forms the hydrogen shift over the sodium and uh, uh, the ortho portions where that hydrogen will shift and remain the sodium reacts with the chlorine and OH will be attached to form as a aldehyde group. So this is about the rimer timer reaction. I hope you understood. So we'll go to the next reaction. Yes, the reduction of phenol. The next one is the reduction of phenol. When a phenol is reacted or when you, when you uh, open the phenol bottle, if you forget to close the cap of that bottle, so what happens easily or it slowly oxidizes phenol to as a benzene. Okay, so if you are if you want to convert from phenol into as a phenol, then we are using as zinc. So the phenol is converted to benzene in the presence of the zinc. So slightly we are giving a temperature where the phenol gives as a benzene plus zinc oxide. So the zinc and oxygen combines to form as a zinc oxide hydrogen. So we know the benzene is surrounded with a six hydrogen group. So there is a one reaction how to convert phenol into as a benzene. So the next reaction the oxidation of phenol. So when a phenol it is in a liquid state when you open in a laboratory if you forget to close the bottle of the phenol when you observe the color of a phenol in an x-ray you can observe a dark color of phenol. Why sir? Why is it so? Means because a phenol is converted as a diketone. So the diketone means as yes, the benzoquinone. This is nothing but it's a benzoquinone. It is a derivative of the ketone group. So then the phenol is oxidized easily when, you, when it is exposed to the atmosphere it oxidizes to give as a benzoquinone. Suppose if you want to convert very fastly from phenol to as a benzoquinone means then you use as a strong oxidizing agent such as the sodium chromate in the presence of 
few drops of acid or acidified sodium dichromate not only that one even it can use as alkaline KMnO4 K2Cr2O7 any ox strong oxidizing agent when you use so phenol will give as a benzoquinone which is in a colored compounds like the dark color is formed so this is what oxidation of phenol with chromic acid produces a conjugated the conjugated diketones the conjugated diketones called as a benzoquinone so upon aerial oxidation phenol is converted to the dark colored mixture containing the quinones so this is what the reactions how a phenol gives a different products by using the carbon dioxide called as a Cobb's reaction by using a aqueous sodium hydroxide in the presence of the chloroform where it gives a salicyl aldehyde ben phenol is gives as a benzene and the last one is a phenol gives as a benzoquinone when it is oxidized yeah here is the one slide just i tried to show the all the reactions what we learned how the phenol reacts with the different reagents just we will brush up few reactions in this slide just is like mind map where you get you will get a lot of idea what reagents we are using what products we are getting that is a very important thing in organic chemistry you should know what products what reactants and what is the conditions if you know these are the things definitely you can success very easily in organic chemistry so the first one is a phenol so i will take just now what we learned the chloroform right the chloroform is a reaction where we got as a rimer timon reaction the salicyl aldehyde is obtained again the same thing carbon dioxide we are using means then we are getting the salicylic acid yes these two reactions just now right now we learned and also when you use the oxidizing agent such as the sodium dichromate in the presence of acid where you will get as a benzoquinone and again phenol reacts the zinc dust where we will get as a benzene this what right now we learnt and again when the phenol reacts the bromine water bromine water we are not using any uh, organic solvent such as the carbon tetrachloride carbon disulfide so when you use those organic solvent then you will get as ortho and para position of the para derivatives of the bromophenol but we are using a bromine water then we will get as a white ppt called as the 2 comma 4 comma 6 tribromophenol and the next one is see here we are using the carbon disulfide and we are maintaining the temperature we are getting the ortho and para derivatives suppose if you use the corn kno 3 here we are getting the picric acid called as the 2 comma 4 comma 6 trinitrophenol if you use a dilute nitric acid we are getting a different byproducts like ortho and para position so here you can observe the bromine in carbon disulfide bromine water and again here con and dilute hno3 so just just one mind map how a different products is obtained when you take a different conditions with phenols okay students again in this slide we are seeing a few reactions what the previous slide we learned again the few reactions i added in this slide so initially we learned about the allogenation the nitration also you know so just here i'm not giving the reaction just i'm giving the orally what products is obtaining you can observe and sulfonation also we are getting as, as the benzene sulfonic acid am i right so it's a the phenolic group is there and we call as a sulfonic acid where it's attached at ortho and para portion okay these are the three reactions already we learned and now the friedel croft alkylation we know when a benzene or when a phenol when it reacts with the alkylation alkylation means we are adding a methyl chloride in the presence of anhydrous aluminum chloride which is a Lewis acid where it gives as a cresol so the ch3 group is attached to ortho and para portion just i'm writing here so it's a very simple reaction already you learned from the 11th grade itself how a friedel croft reaction takes place so but here i'm taking the phenol right this is a phenol so when this phenol reacts with the alkyl chloride so the ch3 cl it's a alkyl chloride in the presence of the Lewis acid such as a, a anhydrous aluminum chloride you will get as orthocresol so what is the formula of the orthocresol where the ch3 group is attached at a ortho portion and at the same time the para portion is obtained where the ch3 group is attached at a para portion so in the fourth position so the when you start the numbering uh, from the alcohol 
OH, so the numbering will get as 4 methyl phenol and 2 methyl phenol. So, this is what the friedel croft alkylation. So, and again, just right now we learnt about that um, the Reimer Timon reaction where we get as a salicylic aldehyde and here also the salicylic acid because we are using C. By seeing the reactants, by seeing the reagents, you should find what products and what is the reaction, what is the naming name of that reaction. And now you can observe here we are using as acyl chloride. So, Friedel Crofts reaction means we have a two types, one is alkylation and one more is called as acylation. Alkylation means CH3Cl, right? Acylation means CH3COCl. So, this is what the CH3COCl you can observe. We are using the same catalyst called as Lewis acid, anhydrous aluminum chloride. So, here when this acyl chloride is reacted, so you can observe a COCH3 group is attached at ortho and para position. So, the COCH3 group means it is nothing but the ketone group, am I right? It is a COCH3 is a uh, ketone group where we call as acetoxy phenol. So, the 4 acetoxy phenol and 2 acetoxy phenol. And again, you can observe the phenol when it reacts with a diozonium chloride. So, benzene diozonium chloride, am I right? So, the benzene diozonium chloride, when it reacts with a phenol, it gives as a diprodate, you can observe. So, we are coupling the reaction. So, the diozonium chloride and phenol. So, when where it gives as a, uh, the different color, it is nothing but the dye test. So, the phenol, when it reacts with the diozonium chloride, we get a colored compound called as a dye. So, in this both, the phenol reacted with the diozonium chloride, this Cl is reacted with one of the hydrogen to form as HCl and remain rest of that nitrogen you can attach to the phenol group where it gives as a para hydroxy azo. So, there is a para hydroxy benzene. So, just I will try to write the reaction here, you can understand better. So, I have a phenol, okay, I have a phenol. So, just I am writing in this way because the reaction you can understand very easily. So, these are what the phenol, right? So, when these a diozonium chloride, the benzene diozonium chloride. So, these also I am writing as this is a benzene diozonium chloride. It is a benzene, am I right? So, here we have a N2 and here we have a Cl group. So, this HCl will combine. So, when this HCl combine, then the remaining part will be attached. So, you can observe the nitrogen, nitrogen, benzene structure and the benzene which is attached to the OH group. So, this reaction we will study later in the amines chapter. So, but here the common reactions, how it gives a uh, positive result like giving a different color. So, the next reaction, when a phenol reacts with a formaldehyde, we get a Bakel light. It is a one of the major polymer we prepare uh, to for which is very very strong. Means that bonding is very strong in this case. So when a phenol reacts with a formal D we we'll get as a uh, Bakel light is one of the polymer. So that also we are going to study in a polymer chapter. And phenol reacted with the zinc dust we get as a benzene already we know and also the benzoquinone also we know. And when a phenol reacts with a a neutral ferric chloride where it gives a positive result by giving a violet color is nothing but the ferric phenoxide. So, this test usually we used to identify the presence of phenol or not, the neutral ferric chloride test. Okay, students? So, as already we learned in the previous slide, the few tests like um, a phenol, how phenol reacts with a neutral ferric chloride to give the violet color. So, here also some test I have taken to test for the alcohol and phenol. So, the first one is the ferric chloride test, the neutral ferric chloride test. When a ferric chloride reacts with a phenol to give the purple color or to give the violet color called as ferric phenoxide ion and hydrogen ion means what what is the meaning of that so when they when this uh, uh, neutral ferric chloride reacted with the phenol the hydrogen ion will come out which gives as a purple color but this test cannot be given to alcohol so that's what this test is not given by alcohol so very important and leucase test already we know leucase test means it's a anhydrous 
जिंक क्लोराइड प्लस कॉन एच सी एल अम राइट सो द अन्ना एड्रेस जिंक क्लोराइड प्लस कॉन एच सी एल सो दैट इज अ मिक्सर ऑफ द ल्यूकियस टेस्ट दैट इज यूज टू आइडेंटिफाई ए प्राइमरी सेकेंडरी एंड टर्शरी हॉल कॉल ल्यूकियस रिएजेंट इमिडियटली गिव्स ए रिजल्ट विथ टर्शरी हॉल कॉल बट स्लोली विथ ए सेकेंडरी विथ प्राइमरी वेरी वेरी स्लो मीन्स प्राइमरी विथ इट विल नॉट गिव अट ऑल अ रिजल्ट सो दैट इज अ वन रिएक्शन वेर इट गिव्स ए Differentiate between the one degree, two degree, and three degree alcohol. So bromine water. Yes, bromine water. When you add the phenol to the bromine, we'll get as white PPT. Am I right? So just previously we learned and litmus test. Very very simple test. Of because litmus, we have the red litmus, we have the blue litmus. Litmus is used to identify whether it's acidic or basic. So here, when the phenol turns blue litmus to red. So yes, it's the acid. If it turns blue to red, it uh, indicates it's the acid, and all call will not show any effect on the litmus paper. Hence, this confirms all call is a less acidic than the phenol. Okay, friends. The next reaction. The next reaction is how way alcohol gives a positive result with a iodoform. So the iodoform means the same we know like. Uh, chloroform chcl3 right and chi3 this iodine iodo means the iodine right the iodine so we call as the iodo form formula formula is chi3 the bromo form is chbr3 the chloro form is chcl3 right like the similar way here also we have a iodo form so this iodo form test it gives only a positive result if a alcohol the methyl group if it is attached to the carbon very very important try to understand the oh group we have that is a common functional group alcohol this oh if it is attached to the carbon so this carbon if it is attached if it is having a methyl group then only it gives a positive result for a iodo form like Yellow PPT, the yellow PPT. So now let us see here how these reactions will take place. The ethanol. So the ethanol, when you write in open structure, as this is the formula of the ethanol CH3, CH2, OH. Am I right? CH3, CH2, OH. See here, there's alcohols having the methyl group which is attached to the carbon. We are, we have the alkyl group which is attached to the carbon. Yes, it gives a positive result. So this ethanol. reacts with a iodine and sodium hydroxide from this iodine and sodium hydroxide only a iodo form is obtained so you can observe the iodo form is the yellow ppt so when a mixture of iodine and sodium hydroxide reacts uh, reacts with ethanol it gives a yellow ppt sodium iodide and water and sodium salt of carboxylic acid so this is what the positive result suppose if we take the methanol so the methanol means only a methyl group is attached or one carbon group is attached to the alcohol so you can see there is no alkyl group am i right so there is no alkyl group if there is no alkyl group means then it will it will not give any positive result with a mixture of iodine and sodium hydroxide and the next reaction the coupling reaction test as previously i said when a phenol reacts with a diozonium chloride it gives as a different color like the dye it gives a orange color it gives a yellow color it is based on what type of reactants that you are taking but here in this class only we are taking as a diozonium chloride reacts with a phenol where it gives as a hcl and we get as hydroxy see the hydroxy azo azo means the nitrogen nitrogen double bond and benzene is also called as the orange dye so this is what the coupling reaction we call the phenol forms yellow orange azo dyes by coupling with benzene diazonium salts whereas alcohol do not react why because alcohol is less acidic than the phenol as simple because we had a litmus test so from that litmus the blue uh, phenol gives a blue litmus uh, ka, ka, means it turns blue to the red so in that way just to try to link and just to try to understand how the reactions giving the different products on what basis we are studying yes students in this uh, 
slide we are studying about the victor mayer test this is also one of the test we used to differentiate between the 1 degree 2 degree 3 degree alcohol not a phenol so here okay, in this test initially we are converting a alcohol to as a nitro group after converting to the nitro groups then again we are carrying the reaction in the presence of the nitrous acid and finally with a aqueous sodium hydroxide and different alcohol gives a different color for example the first one is the one primary alcohol it gives a blood red color after reacting with a sodium hydroxide that is a lost series and the two degree alcohol it gives a blue color and the three degree alcohol it gives a colorless so this Victor May test is also called as a red blue test. So now let us see how these reactions will take place. So initially we have taken the primary alcohol as I said it takes a number of series first primary alcohol we need to convert into as a nitro group. So how to convert a nitro group the directly we cannot convert so the alcohol is reactive with the hydrogen iodide to give as a alkyl iodide. So alkyl iodide reacts with a silver nitrate will get as nitro alkane am i right so this is what the till now we converted initially that alcohol we need to convert into the nitro group yes that is what r group and here r group is there again after reacting with the nitrous acid the formula of the nitrous acid we know hno2 so how this nitrous acid is produced it is a mixture of con hcl and sodium nitrate where we get as a nitrous acid so after nitri after reacting with the nitrous acid again we are making react with a uh, base so the aqueous sodium hydroxide so it is understood the sodium hydroxide means it is in a solution state only we are using everywhere so now alcohol we converted as iodo alkane and nitro alkane the nitrous acid HO HNO2 it is in an open form so HNO2 reacts with a nitro alkane where it gives as a nitrolic acid. So this nitrolic acid again it reacts with a sodium hydroxide to give the blood red color. In the same case here also what we got as nitrous acid reacted with a secondary alcohol where we got as a pseudo nitrol again it is react with a sodium hydroxide we get as, we got as a blue color. And the last one is after converting to the nitro group. So if you add a nitrous acid, there is no reaction. Why there is no reaction? Because we have uh, nitro group. Nitro group is attached to the carbon. And here there is a one hydrogen, right? There is a one hydrogen. Here we have the two hydrogen. But here there is no hydrogen. So that hydrogen cannot, uh, uh, is not present in this group. That's why it is not giving the result, positive result with a tertiary alcohol so these are one of the very simple and important reaction where we can differentiate a different type of a alcohol by using a victor mayer test so in this test the number of the series will take place so that you need to remember now let us come to the very very important the last concept as a ether so ether is a functional group of alcohol just i will show you so we have a C2H5OH. This is what alcohol. Am I right? So this alcohol even can be written as a ether. So hence it is a functional group of alcohol. You can count the number of carbon, oxygen, and hydrogen. Go back to the alcohol concept. We learned how to prepare alcohol by hydration of alkene followed by a Markovnikov's rule where the three steps will take place in the presence of the 443 Kelvin by adding a concave to SO4. So these are all the general keywords to convert alkene into as a alcohol. So here also we have a alcohol when you use a 443 Kelvin in the presence of the con H2SO4 we get as an alkene. In the alcohol chapter we learned how to prepare alcohol by which processes hydration of al alkene. So when you remove the water molecules from a alcohol you will get as alkene that is a reverse processes. So we learned both also hydration of alkene dehydration of alcohol. So here also the dehydration of alcohol gives as an alkene in the presence of the con H2SO4 
443 kelvin the temperature is very important now if you reduce the temperature from 443 to 413 kelvin you will get as a ether it is a diethyl ether what mechanism here alcohol gives as a ether by using which mechanism the sn2 mechanism it follows a sn2 mechanism means the dehydration reaction the dehydration of alcohol gives as a ether am i right so now let us see in detail how these mechanisms will take place so here the symmetrical ether only the symmetrical ether can be prepared by the dehydration of alcohol symmetrical so both side both side there are same number of carbon atoms the yield of ether depends upon the nature of alcohol as yes, the nature of alcohol means if it, it differs with a 2 degree alcohol it differs with a 3 degree alcohol so the different products is obtained so this method is suitable for preparation of ethers having a primary alkyl groups only means then you should understand then what type of alcohol we prefer primary alcohol secondary also okay quite natural it gives a product of ether but tertiary, tertiary it will not give means there it gives a it follows a different mechanism so later we will study about that it is not suitable for the preparation of unsymmetrical for unsymmetrical means okay i'm writing a c2h5 okay the c2h5 so there is unsymmetrical right there is a two carbon atoms there is a one carbon atom so then this method only this method is not suitable to prepare a unsymmetrical ether as a mixture of products or form so straight this just these are all the basic idea about how the alcohol gives a different ether so the primary alcohol i am taking initially the primary alcohol so primary alcohol it gives a better yield of the ether so the formation of ether from primary alcohol is accompanied by the formation of the small amounts of the alkene the reaction occurs by sn2 mechanism at low temperature so the 413 kelvin as already the previous slide i said it follows the sn2 mechanism and we need to maintain the temperature 413 if you increase the temperature then it gives as a alkene so here you see the formation of ether from primary alcohol accompanied by formation of small amount of alkene there is a another byproduct small percentage so they just will neglect this part just you remember primary alcohol gives as ether in the presence of the 413 kelvin and in the presence of the concave stage of 4 which follows the sn2 mechanism so now the secondary i will come to the secondary and tertiary alcohol so if you take that secondary and tertiary alcohol so instead it follows the sn1 mechanism so sn1 mechanism means then the different mechanisms will take place right the elimination reaction and substitution just here it is competes over that so now let us see that dehydration of the secondary or tertiary alcohol it gives a ether is unsuccessful because as elimination competes over the substitution am i right elimination competes over the substitution and alkenes are easily formed so then here what type of reaction is taking place the substitution reaction so if you take if you prefer the secondary and tertiary then what happens it follows the elimination reaction so that's why an elimination reaction and also it gives us sn1 mechanism so the reactivity order is primary secondary and tertiary alcohol where it gives as ether by sn2 mechanism so from this student uh, students from this chapter overall alcohol phenol and ether this is the one ether the maximum questions they will ask now let us see the mechanism how way ether is formed by the dehydration of alcohol in the presence of the concave H2SO4 in the presence of 413 Kelvin, 413 Kelvin. So here we are taking the two moles. Okay, we'll see the mechanism. So in this, we are, we have taken an alcohol. As initially we have taken alcohol, we have a, we have added a few drops of a concave H2SO4. This hydrogen ion 
will occupy where there is a more electron on the oxygen where it gives as oxonium ion you can observe the hydrogen is a one attached from from the concave state so for this hydrogen is liberated right so now this oxonium ion reacts with one more molecule of the ethanol ch3 ch2 oh so the oxonium ion it reacts with one more molecule of the ethanol to form as a oxonium ion see already the oxonium ion is formed right this oxonium ion is formed this oxonium ion reacts with the ethanol to give the dialkyl oxonium ion so let me exp explain the mechanism so now this is a alcohol this is a oxonium ion which is obtained the first step so this is unstable just it goes as a water molecule so when it goes as a water molecules we have a positive on the carbon this positive on the carbon means it seeks electrons so that electrons rich electrons we have in a alcohol group so this carbon will react with the rich electrons on the oxygen to give as a dialkyl oxonium ion so dialkyl oxonium ion so dialkyl oxonium ion so then the water is obtained from this because it is unstable so now you observe this we are taken in the third step so the deprotonation of hydrogen will take place because this is unstable because oxygen is attached with three groups so our deprotonation will take place to form as a ether the second step is a very slow step because that oxonium ion is reacting with a one more molecule of ethanol to give as a dialkyl oxonium ion again it undergoes a deprotonation to give as a ether so this is a very simple so this mechanism follows what type of reaction sn2 mechanism okay it's a sn2 as already we learned in the previous slide and it's a substitution reaction and the reactivity series is primary is more than the two secondary more than the three degree means the alcohol i'm talking so this is how the mechanisms will take place trends so again again i'm repeating here so the first step the formation the attacking of electrophile on the oxygen to form as oxonium ion again that oxonium ion react with one more of the ethanol which is a very uh, what we call the slow step to form the intermediate so where the water molecule is liberated and the last step the deprotonation so the deprotonation gives as a ether so you can observe here so we have a uh, what type of the um, symmetrical ether so this method is only preferred for the symmetrical ether so okay students in last um, reaction or in a mechanism there is a limited property like only to prepare a symmetrical ether right so then what to do to get a unsymmetrical ether so for that we are following the one of one of the naming reaction is williamson ether synthesis very important reaction so in organic chemistry the naming reaction is very important so the williamson synthesis is the one of the um, um, reaction to prepare a unsymmetrical ether it is a preferred for not only unsymmetrical even the symmetrical as well as unsymmetrical ether we can prepare so initially we are taken the alkyl halide this alkyl halide reacts with a a sodium alco oxide ion in the presence of catalyst so in the presence of the catalyst means here the sodium alco oxide we are taking and the alkyl halide so by using this two we we catalyst means we are using the small amount of the base or else even the uh, catalyst is also not required so when this both reacts to form as a ether so the r dash means the unsymmetrical ether you can observe here there is a one r is there and here the r dash so just i will write the general reaction the methyl chloride the methyl chloride when it reacts with a as the sodium ethoxide the sodium ethoxide is a sodium ethoxide in the presence of what i said the base or the dry ether you can take the dry ether is also so what happens so the sodium the sodium and chlorine combines to form as a sodium chloride and remaining product you can observe the ch3 o c2 h5 am i right so this you can observe it is a unsymmetrical ether there is a ethyl group there is a methyl group so it's a unsymmetrical ether that can be prepared by using the williamson 
synthesis method. So here also there is a some limitations via. What is that limitations means? What type of alkyl halide? What type of the sodium alkoxide? What type of sodium alkoxide has to be taken to get a better yield of the ether? So that is a question here in this uh, Williamson ether synthesis. But it is very clear we are you we can prepare from this method any type of like unsymmetrical as well as a symmetrical ether. It involves the reaction of the alkyl halide with a suitable sodium alkoxide to give ether. And also it is a very important method for the preparation of the both symmetrical as well as, as well as unsymmetrical ether. The reaction involves an SN2 attack. So SN2, here also SN2 mechanism. If it is a SN1, then it gives a different products. Please make note that that's what the question they will arise. So here SN2 attack of an alkoxide ion on primary alkyl halide. See in the previous session, previous slide, we learned how a ether, a symmetrical ether is obtained primary is better reaction towards the con H2SO4 means a primary alcohol gives as a ether secondary is less the tertiary then it gives as a different mechanism the elimination reactions will take place so that we will study later so just we will see the Williamson ether synthesis how it is formed what type of uh, reactants that you need to be taken to get a, a better yield of the ether so you can observe we are taking the tertiary alkooxide if you take if you prefer the tertiary alkooxide with primary alkyl halide a better yield of the ether which is unsymmetrical ether you can observe the overall it's a good product a good yield of the unsymmetrical ether is obtained and the byproduct is sodium bromide so let us see williamson synthesis occurs by the sn2 mechanism and primary alkyl halide it is the most reactive Therefore, the best yield of the unsymmetrical ether is obtained when the alkyl halide is primary. Suppose if you prepare the alkyl halide as a secondary or the tertiary, then instead of the substitution reaction, it follows the elimination reaction. So, elimination reaction means you will get as alkene. So, when this tertiary alkyl halide, when it reacts with a methoxy, the sodium methoxy, then what happens? You will get as a all can means the elimination reaction and SN1 mechanism. It is not a SN2 mechanism. So that's why what uh, reactants that to be select that is very important. Then it gives a, as a better yield of the heater. Suppose if you prefer the tertiary alkyl halide, then it will give as a what we call um, the alkene product. So this is about the Williamson heater preparation by using a different reactant. Yes, students, here as I said, that's like if you take the tertiary alkyl halide, it gives as a alkene, right? So you can observe the sodium and bromine combines to form a sodium bromide and this carbon is already, it is in a positive charge, right? So hydrogen will take place from the another carbon atom to form as a methanol, like the alcohol group. So now suppose this carbon form the po possess the positive charge, then both carbon combines to form as carbon, carbon double bond. This is what the simple mechanism of this uh, uh, Williamson ether synthesis. If you take the tertiary alkyl halide, it gives as a alkene. I hope you understood students the mechanism, simple mechanism, that one. Yes, students, here is the one screen just I have shown what type of alkyl halide if you take what product is obtained, this is what the Williamson ether synthesis. If you take the primary alkyl halide, you will get as a ether. If you take the secondary, if you take the tertiary, then what happens? Alkene is obtained. This is very simple. If you take the secondary or tertiary alkyl halide with the presence of the sodium alkoxide, so then what happens? Alkene. So then these two reactions, this two reaction, SN1 mechanism and elimination reaction. Okay, students. Fine. Thank you, students. We will continue the next session, the chemical properties of ether.